Hey everyone, this is Matt Prez with Converge, and welcome to the second video in our series talking about parametric modeling. To get started, we have a blank file open in the IPS unit system, and we're going to start by going to the Tools, Equations Manager, and make sure that we're on the Dimension view. We want to start creating some global variables. We're going to start with box width equals 10, box length equals 5, box thickness equals 1. We also want to dictate the size of a hole that we're going to place on our part and its distance that it's inset. So we're going to say hole DIA for diameter and we're going to say half inch and we're going to say hole edge offset and we're going to offset that in one inch. So this gives us a lot of information that we can use to help set up a model that we're going to drive parametrically. To get started, we want to select the top plane and start a new sketch, use a center point rectangle at the origin, and drag it out to size. I like to use the S shortcut key to get access to my quick tools, and we're mainly going to focus on smart dimensions. We're going to apply a horizontal dimension, press the equal key, and link it to our box width. We're then going to apply a vertical dimension, equal key, and link it to the box length. Once we have those two dimensions, we're going to press F to fit to screen and exit our sketch. We're going to extrude this out using our box thickness value. And now we have a box that is 10 inches by 5 inches by 1 inch thick. We're then going to start a new sketch and I'm going to use the face of the part rather than a sketch plane. And the reason I like to do this is because this face is going to move and adjust and give us the references we need. We could also make this sketch on the top plane, so that way we don't have to calculate or solve for the location of the sketch. But again, in this simple example, sketching on the face is going to be just fine and exactly what we need in this case. So we're going to select the face and start with my line tool and set it for construction. I'm going to make sure that it snaps to the left edge. I'm going to drag it out a distance, draw a second line and then the third line that snaps all the way to the right edge. Then I'm going to double left click to end the line tool. I'm going to hit the green check mark to get off of the insert line tool. Next, I'm going to left click on the first short section, control select, click on the right section, and say equals. I'm also going to hit the line tool one more time for construction and go from this edge vertically. Double click and hit escape. I also want to make this line equal to this line. So now what we have is a setup where we're equidistant away from the upper edge and the lower edge. I then want to apply a dimension to one of these lines using the equal key. I'm going to set it equal to the whole edge offset. And this is going to dictate how far in a circle, or if we're using the whole wizard feature, a hole is going to be located from our edge. In this specific instance, I'm simply going to draw a circle rather than use the whole wizard feature, but the application is still the same because we have the intersection point. I'm going to press S, apply a smart dimension, equals, and then set this equal to our whole diameter. Let's go ahead and exit the sketch, and let's extrude cut this all the way through our part. I'm going to use through all, or we can also use up to next to make sure that it goes all the way through the plate. These two options are important to make sure that it always goes through the plate regardless of the thickness. If we use a blind value such as one inch, if we change the thickness value of the plate, that value likely will not be correct. We also do have the available option to set this equal to a global variable such as box thickness so that way those dimensions are always the same. Either option is fine, it just depends on what the end result you're looking for needs to be. So let's go ahead and say OK, and note that we now have created a hole through the part that is based on our settings for how far we want it in from the edge and what its diameter is going to be. Now at this point we want to start to talk about patterning and how all these patterns can be adjusted. So I'm going to expand Cut Extrude 1 and I want to show Sketch 2. I then I'm going to use my Pattern dropdown and do a Curve Driven Pattern. For my curve driven pattern, my direction is going to be the longer construction line section and the feature is going to be the extrude cut one. 
what this does here is it allows me to create an equally spaced pattern of this hole the full distance of this line. So you can see that we have five instances and the spacing is based on the full length of the line. So if we say OK and we go back into our equation manager and we take a look at, let's go ahead and just minimize this so we can see it. And we take a look at modifying the box width value. For example, if we make this 15 inches and we rebuild it. So you can see here that the holes adjust based on the length of this line. Now we didn't actually put in a global variable for the number of instances, but we could do that as well. Let's go ahead and add one now called hole num. And let's say that we want eight instances of the hole and say OK. In order for us to apply this, we need to double click on that feature and find the location of the number of instances, in this case five, and we'll double click on it, press equals, and set it equal to our whole number global variable. Once we press control B to rebuild that, you can now see that we have eight holes equally spaced along that edge. There are times when you're going to run into issues making the plate, for example, too small. If we come into our equations and we make the distance for this plate, let's say eight inches, and we rebuild this, the holes are starting to bunch together pretty closely. Now, if we make it even smaller, say five inches, and we rebuild it, the holes are going to start to intersect each other. Now, in this case, it doesn't actually throw an error. It doesn't tell us that there's a problem, but obviously the geometry like this is not ideal. So keep that in mind that there are instances where you could potentially run into issues by having these automatic updates. There are other ways that we can approach this as well, and we're going to talk about how to create if-else statements to dictate how many hole patterns are going to be located inside of a certain area. But for right now, I want to make sure that we understand the application that we did here. So the overall process of creating these global variables helped us predefine the size of our plate, our hole, the location of the holes, etc. Then the application of the construction lines to help drive the pattern is really what's going to be helpful to the overall process of making a part that updates intelligently. Now, of course, there are some cases where you really need to drive the spacing between the holes rather than the number of holes across the length. But there are many cases where we simply just make a hole pattern on an edge and we populate it with a certain number of holes to, let's say, rivet two sheets together. So for right now, let's go ahead and save this file and we can use it as we go on through our series. So that way you can learn to model a couple other options for how to create these hole patterns. Hopefully you guys learned a few things and hopefully you'll join us in the next video where we move on to creating some more intelligent equations directly in the equation manager to help drive these features.